I'll quickly do my team. Moody, Taylor, Offa, Whitelock, Barrett, Frizzell, Popoli'i, Savia, <laughs> Perinara, Barrett, <laughs> Reese, Ioane, Anton Leonard Brown, Jordan, Barrett, done. Thank you. Seven changes with Dalton Popoli uh, out so, there. Uh, someone's really been on the about. phone. Someone's been on the phone. But I tell you what then, OK, Dalton Popoli'i then you're seeing as the open side flanker. Adi Savia is available for selection this week. What does that mean for Sam Kane? No, Sam Kane needs a rest, right? Savia at eight. Him at seven, maybe Hoskins on the bench to cover all three. Shannon Frizzell's made some big moves oh, in the last couple of games, and big shifts. For you, you're liking, though, another option on the blind side flank, and is that impact on a starting spot or off the bench? I think you give him off the bench. I think, uh, you know, Cullen Grace, the way he's sort of played his super rugby and the physicality he brings, but also, um, you know, his, his ability to be able to play at lock, defensive um, as well. But I think that's the balance we've got. If, I mean, look at, you look at the Australian and how sort of inexperienced their team is. We're not sitting here going, make changes and, and don't worry about because if we lose or not, this is an all-black team that's going to go out there and win. We've easily got two, two teams that can go out there. So you're prepared to take risks this week? I think you give. You, I, I think that we've got a good enough team. If we did make those seven or eight changes, that we can go out there and still beat the Wallabies, and that's probably the the confidence that the coaches will have. One really interesting thing that I cannot believe is happening, and it goes back to our early discussion. And I don't know if you know this at home. The All Blacks have to fly up on the day of the game and then fly back on the day of the game. I don't think that's ever happened in a Test match. So Mills, you know what that's like. So a couple of times. We got the super teams to fly out straight after the game. You lose those games because it's very, very hard, you know, to actually have a day like that where you're flying. That's incredible. And the the other side of it for me is is who they choose to give a break. If you're making that change at fullback, does that mean Bowden Barrett shifts forward to ten? Do you play Aaron Smith or do you give him a week off, remembering we have Argentina? a week later. So whether or not some of those guys who have played a lot of test matches, is it time for Brad Webber to get his opportunity? I'll tell you what, I can't wait to see this team because if it's got the talent we're talking about, we've all waited for the performances to Zakiri Ioane. Couldn't remember how good he was. We're going to talk about him a little bit later after the break. We look back and we get deeper into the game with Tabai Matson. but one player would love to see back in action this weekend and was at probably our very best in Bledisloe 3, Richie Moonga. Kia ora, welcome back to the breakdown after the weekend. There were some standout players and performances and with the help of coach and tactical genius, Tabai Matson, he was with me in the war room. It's time for us to look deeper into the game. We're going to talk analytics with you and you're with us for the next month or so. And I, I want you to talk to us straight away. What, what are the analytics for you? What does analysis mean and how do you go about it and what's relevant? We, we were actually talking before the test match on Saturday how when you start off as a coach, there's just so many numbers. Um, it's nearly over-analysis, lots of numbers that eventually you figure out are really irrelevant. And so analysis or analytics is really about answering questions that coaches want to ask and trying to objectify some of the, the grey stuff, the invisible stuff in the game. Didn't they call it paralysis by analysis? They did. Which, I mean, <laughs> when it first... It did, they did, because when I first started studying the games, the, 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 like, the team that made the most errors was winning the game. It's, it's a contrast, yeah. but... Because basically they're playing more football, right? But tell me this, Tabs, like what is the difference between analytics and stats? Because if you get lost in the stats, yeah. you just go nuts. So what, what is the analytics? What, do you pour it down a funnel or what do you yeah, do? Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. There's a, a much smarter guy, Simon Chi, in Calgary University who kind of does the analytics for us. But it's really about taking, it's kind of KPIs versus analytics. So KPIs, as you said, like... These are the raw things a team's doing. It's making tackles. But actually, at the end of the day, it still loses. So the analytics that you'll see us talking about over the next month is around, does this action change the scoreboard? And I think that's a really important differentiation. Does this impact the team's ability to get their scoreboard ticking over? And there are critical parts of the game that you've identified, and, and, and they change from week to week. But this week, we're focusing on six of them, which, in terms of the analytics, are critical for that team performance and the effect it has on the scoreboard. And, and these are those six. Yep. So the big six, and we've kind of added one from the um, test match on Saturday, scrum and line out, always a critical set piece. Starter, special plays, the defence, the kicking game, which we talk, talk, spoke about on Saturday, and the importance that the Wallabies didn't get it right and the impact it had around the turnovers. Um, and, of course, phase attack. You know, what are the default plays for the Wallabies and the, um, and the All Blacks and how they can either hold the ball 
or put the teams under pressure. And so what we're going to focus on, one of those, and the ones you've added, um, is, is the turnovers and, and the attack efficiency and something the All Blacks have been very good at for a long, long time. But we've seen in the, in the Rugby Championship this year, what do these stats mean? How has this played out? What does it mean for the people at home? Yeah. Before we start, can I just understand what a turnover is? Because most of the people I talk to think of turnovers in the ruck. Yeah. Is it only in the ruck no. or no? no? So with regard to these numbers, the turnovers with any time the opposition cough up the ball to you. So it might be a line out you've won off, off their throw, um, if a player just drops it, uh, and also, you know, traditional, traditional jackal, we win the ball on a breakdown, we move it on. 